In this video, we're going to be going over the new anti-seam add-on for Blender. Now this add-on takes an existing image texture, as you can see here, with seam artifacts on the edges, and it removes those seams without any need for texture painting or any other further manipulations. All you have to do is click apply, and the add-on will do all of the work for you. So in this video, we're going to go over the basics of using the add-on on a standard texture like the grass, the metal, the concrete, and the tree here, and um, all the things you need to know about how it works and the properties that you can tweak. So if you don't have the add-on already, there's a free download link in the description below. Uh, once you've downloaded it, make sure to come back to the tutorial here. The first thing you'll need to do is make sure you've downloaded it as a zip file and have not extracted it. It still needs to stay as a zip file. And once you've done that, you can go to the edit menu here in Blender, go to preferences. From here, we're going to go to install. And from here, you need to navigate to the folder where you downloaded the zip file, select it like this, and then click install add-on. The next thing we need to do is go up here to the categories and check user. And from here, we'll choose anti-seam. Once you've enabled this, the add-on is ready to go. Here, you can also expand it to read more about what it does. And also, if you find any bugs, you can click the report a bug feature here. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is click refresh, close the user preferences. And here, we'll make a new window. Then we'll go to the shader editor. And in here, we will start working with anti-seam. So I'm going to select this texture here for my concrete. Let me just enable the viewport here so we can see what we're doing. And then the next thing I'm going to do is select the image texture. We're then going to go to the texture tools tab. And under anti-seam here, we're going to click anti-seam. So in this case, anti-seam has done a pretty good job just with the default settings but we're gonna quickly go over um, all of these properties here and how they affect the end result. So the first one here is the shift. This is basically for the secondary layer that covers up the seams. And if you just tweak that, you can see what's happening there. So if we set this to zero, it will be at the same uh, coordinates as the normal X axes. And that means that these seams here won't actually disappear because you're overlaying them at exactly the same spot. So you wanna offset them by roughly half so that the middle of the texture is showing up where those rough lines would be normally. The same thing goes for the Y axis. Just again, this time uh, it's in this direction. The next thing here is the border blend and then the border hardness. So to make this easier to see, we're actually going to change from color to debug mode and this will show us all of the different layers. So here you can see we have the blue, which is the main layer. Then we have a green layer and a red layer to cover up the seams of the blue layer. So for now, we can just kind of ignore the green and the red. We're mainly concerned about the blue. So in this case here, when we uh, use the border blend, uh, if we increase it, you can see that the amounts of a uh, texture that actually gets used from underneath is a lot smaller and you start having more of the uh, kind of seam detail show. So if you have any sort of gradient from the outside to the inside, you don't wanna have this value too low. Otherwise, as you can see here, we kind of have the same problem as we did before. And then it, even if you connect the color, you can see these seams haven't really disappeared. They've just got a little bit more soft. Uh, so in this case, we want to set the border relatively low. And then you can see in the uh, debug option here that we have quite a wide space there. Now, this applies for both uh, the X and the Y axes. So you're kind of controlling everything all at once there. Um, the next one is the border hardness. And that determines how much of a kind of gradient fade you have between the original texture and the new underlaid texture. So here, if we turn up the border hardness, you can see it becomes very, very contrasted and the area of gradient is very small. However, if we turn this down, perhaps all the way to one, you can see that the start and the end of the gradient has a lot more distance. Um, and this is perhaps more suited for textures that are a bit more soft um, and that the blending doesn't matter too much. 
So the next texture here, we're going to just quickly go over the grass texture, just so you can see how it's going. So let's have a look at these uh, seams here. Pretty rough, left and right, up and down, select it, anti-seam, boom. There you go, ready. Uh, we are getting a couple artifacts here, so what we might do is uh, shift it across a little bit. Um, yeah, that looks a little bit better. And then you can also, if you'd like to, you can see uh, as we turn up the border blend, it becomes a lot smaller. So let's turn that down maybe a little bit more. And then we can turn down the border hardness because a little bit of fade on grass doesn't really matter too much. In this case, I might set it to, yeah, 1.5 was good. Okay, again, last one here, just for this random asphalt texture that I found. Just select it, anti-seam, ready to go. Uh, also, if you want to, for any of these textures, you can just select it and click remove, and you have the original texture back. So here, if you want to change it to something else, you can do that here, and then just click anti-seam, and it's back to the anti-seamed version of it. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself here. We had the asphalt. There we go. Okay, so here you can see it's done a pretty okay job as well. A couple artifacts here with the white parts, but otherwise it works fine. Uh, and then last one here for this tree bark, select it there, and uh, the results are pretty good as well. Again, for things uh, like tree bark, where you have a lot of lines, it is quite difficult for the blending to occur properly. Um, just because of how the texture is rotated and everything else. And you can sometimes get some kind of discrepancies at the borders. So if we just increase the uh, blend there and uh, maybe turn down the hardness to give it a bit of fade. And there you go, ready to go. So the last feature I'd just like to quickly talk about is that uh, the method that this node group uses for generating these uh, seamless textures is completely deterministic. So there's no procedural textures used, which means it's pretty much ready to bake out and use in any other software for game engines or anything else. The texture that you have here is completely seamless now and uh, can be used anywhere. So that's pretty much the end of this video. Um, hope you found it useful. Again, there's a link down in the description below for the add-on if you don't have it already. Feel free to share the video or the add-on. Hope you have a great week and I'll see you guys in the next one.